know what the hell I'm doing. Okay. <sighs> Do it live. Okay. For the past two months, I attempted to make a brand new video game every week. That's six games in two months. Was it was it smart? No. <laughs> oh, but some of these games is pretty bad, but I did them. They mine. I'm proud of them. I have no coding experience. I have no artistic experience. And I have never shipped a game. I'm not a professional. I'm not, you know, the secret genius. None of that. I'm just a guy who wanted to make games. I kind of just jumped at it, you know? And if you're somebody who's curious about getting into game development, this video, I hope, will answer a lot of questions for you because I went from someone with no experience to completed a game in a very short amount of time. If you already know how to make games, uh, <laughs> hopefully you can um, help me <laughs> learn how to do better in the future. Um, you will see some of the struggles I face that you maybe can avoid. Even if you are 10 times more experienced than I am, um, it probably will teach you a few things. I think mainly for me, I was frustrated with uh, my career and my job and just never doing what I wanted to do and being uh, passionate about what it is that I did. Um, I always wanted to do this, but I just never dedicated myself to it. I could be like, oh, you know, right, I'm writing all these game design documents or watching game dev YouTubers and I'm kind of vaguely interested, but I never sat down and said, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm gonna get it done. I'm gonna I'm I'm start and finish. But for me mainly, it was a health reason. I had a health situation come up and I kinda had four months where I was just in the house, I couldn't work and I couldn't necessarily do what I wanted to do um, in terms of moving around or feeling comfortable and kinda something snapped. Then something just snapped, something inside of me. What if this was it? You know, not to get too dark. <laughs> but, you know, how could I live with myself saying I've never finished any of the games that I was so proud of in my own mind? And I decided to go on this challenge. I said, every week I'm going to make a new game. And they're all going to be trash. <laughs> but I'm going to complete them uh, to the best of my ability. Even if I don't complete the game, I want it to be in some sort of complete form that it is showable all right so let me break down the rules of the challenge i will pick a a subject and i will basically make a mission statement for that game the mission statement could be as simple as i want to make a game about a bouncing ball it could be a game about combat it could be a game about a uh, story i had to complete that mission within that week and have a start to finish project that is playable that's my criteria those are my rules that's the challenge a uh, brand new idea every week at the end of the week, that's it. Pencils down, you're done. My goal in game one was to make a simple game with simple logic. I did not want to dive into any systems such as AI, detail collision, any sort of like really difficult animation or anything. I really wanted to take the basic building blocks that you get in any game engine and I wanted to build a game around that. You might say that doesn't really count, you know, because it's a lot of the basic stuff. But again, I wanted to practice finishing a game and by that it means it has rules it's not just oh you walk from point a to point b the game is over that doesn't really count i actually built something that has a failure state and a success state but i just wanted to use the most basic tools that i can so this was my idea uh you play as a explorer and you enter into a maze and you have to escape the maze while also trying to survive within a certain time limit it's foggy, it's atmospheric. As I learned very quickly, uh, lesson one, 90% of what you have as an idea you will not be able to do. You will probably have to cut it for time. Um, and very quickly I started to realize the idea I had versus the game I was making was two totally different things. I had monsters, torches, treasures, moving walls, puzzles. I had this grand vision for the next indie game hit. <laughs> that was gonna be, I only made it in the week. Uh, it doesn't have to be Elden Ring, you know? It doesn't have to be that. Uh, I'll just settle for this little detailed maze game that's similar to The Witness <laughs> that I'm gonna make in one week. Um, it did not happen that way at all. 
One thing I really struggled with in that game, I had a lot of performance and optimization problems. So if you don't know what you're doing, you'll start to have lag and the game will just kind of devolve slowly as you add to it. Um, and I did not anticipate that. I figured since I was doing such a small game, it would be perfectly fine. That was not the case. Lesson two, project structure is everything. Me, I, I started to put things in the game and see bugs. I'm like, where did that come from? And it was something that I did way back in the beginning that I left on the screen somewhere. It was just a big mess. The most basic thing would take me hours. Something as simple as building a torch. It took me forever to try to figure out to the point where I just scrapped the idea and I just put the torches on the walls. As I continued, I started to make sense of the chaos that was the game and I started to get into a flow. Tip number three, before you know it, you just, you're, you're doing it. Um, it, it's no longer learning. You're just producing it at that point. Um, that's the scariest part because you don't know if what you're producing is any good. And if it's not, you don't want to do it. You, you end up in this weird catch 22 where you're like, I'm making garbage. I'm making this garbage game, but I'm making a game, but, I, but it's terrible. And <laughs> so I had built out the maze. I had built out the torches and the lighting. I had built out the, um, AI for the phantom that would be in the maze with you and all the basic fundamentals that you would have in the game. So I had two days left and here I decided to get fancy. So <laughs> four days into the project, I had 80% of what the game was supposed to be completed. And mostly I was done and I was looking at it like, wow, I made a game. <laughs> I did it, successful. Let me go back and add some of those cool features that I had initially planned. Things like moving the torch around the map caused me a lot of trouble with the lighting and the fog and collision. Adding um, traps caused me to have to redo the entire way I did walls. And then I realized, oh my God, I'm not gonna finish this in two days. <laughs> so I had to take them out and take them out. It took three times as long because now I had I'd broken so much stuff and it just, it just showed me that always have a plan of how you're gonna do things from the beginning. Even if you wanna pick it up from later, right? It would, it would definitely help you to structure it right from the beginning so you can add to it later. Um, and that is not what I did on this project. So I drove myself crazy the last two days trying to fix this. So <laughs> um, around this time, I actually had my nephew over <laughs> and he was able to play it. Um, as I was finishing up the game and seeing his reaction and having someone play your video game for the first time is a moment that I will never forget as corny as it sounds um, But I was able to to record him You're scared. That's what it is Go around the corner. He's not gonna be there He's not gonna be there You see no one's there So he was playing it no one is and there basically what happens is you enter the maze there's a lot of fog there's atmospheric music there is it's very dark and bleak almost too much so now if i was working on the game i would definitely change that but it added to the mystique a little bit and he he was so terrified that he could not finish the game maybe because it's terrible but <laughs> but he told me in watching him play it was because it was too scary and I thought that was an accomplishment because I wanted the game to be scary. And wrap up project one, um, I wanted to package my game. So I pulled up a tutorial. I'm gonna learn how to package up my game and be done with the project. I'll upload it on itch. I'll get a million views and then I'm rich and I'm a greatest game development of all time. I said this should be easy piece of cake. Walk in the park. <laughs> nah. Didn't happen that way at all. I could not package my game for some reason. It turns out, um, using the Paragon assets from the Epic Games Store, that asset was causing me issue after issue and it just crashed and it just would not work unless I removed him. So unless I can find a way to model a brand new character, I was, I was stuck and I was just really defeated and heartbroken that I could not package this game. It was playable, but um, I could not allow anyone else to play it. I just, oh my God, it's frustrating. Um, 
it kind of crushed my motivation. It made me not want to continue with the project and um, just just scrap the whole game a week thing and just give up. At this point, I had barely told anybody what I was doing or why I was doing it. And I could kind of bow out gracefully, but I continued on. And I don't know why. Game two, finish it, polish it, make it simple, you're done. Since I used assets for my first game, I wanted to make all of my own assets in this game. Again, this is still done in a week. Building your own 3D models, assets, and animations is not feasible. <laughs> to do what I set out to do in game two as a downgrade from game one was possibly the dumbest thing I could have ever done. <laughs> the goal, game two was supposed to be a 3D break the targets. Break the targets is a bonus mode from Super Smash Bros. the game series. Um, basically, targets are placed on a map. Your character has specific abilities. You utilize those to break every target, and then you get a new record on the screen. And you beat it. Yay, congratulations. And I always loved Break the Targets. I thought it was dope. The idea of a kind of 3D platformer in which you have to hit certain points seemed very simple to me, but it wasn't. <laughs> so, and, and this is lesson one from game two. I learned that half of you guys are cheating, right? You'll get online and you'll learn about 3D modeling from uh, a Blender tutorial or a Maya tutorial or maybe ZBrush and they'll show you a, a circle, a sphere, a cube, and then he'll turn it into the statue of David. And you're like, oh my God, that's incredible. Um, that's not how they do it in games. <laughs> they're, li they're lying to you, right? In games, they do do that maybe in the beginning, but especially indie games. That is not how they do it. I wish I can go in depth in the process, but I'm not well versed on it yet. I'm learning it um, and I'm just relaying what I've learned to you. They use something called a base mesh. A base mesh is exactly what it sounds like. It's almost like a template. So they have these templates and then they overlay their character on top of the template and that cuts out 90% of the work. For me, I kind of felt cheated because I thought I had to start from a cube every time. Um, and I did not so I made my own base mesh and I was trying to make characters based on my base mesh and it was looking kind of well you know I spent a good amount of time on it and I, I spent about two to three days on learning to model I broke it up into about 40% of this game would be modeling my characters and kind of the world and maybe 30% of it would be developing the logic for the game maybe the other 10% would be polished I figured this game would be very simple to make <laughs> Um, I was wrong again. Created kind of a, a MVP, which is a minimum viable product in the first day, which was you can destroy a target. And then I went on to modeling for about two to three days. I got a model that I like, and I quickly learned that if you're bad at modeling, it doesn't import well. <laughs> it doesn't like you, it throws errors, it hates you. Um, there's these thing called vertices, oh my God. And it's just, dang, it ain't go well. My character had all types of issues and glitches. If you don't know what you're doing, it will show in your final model. And that's what was happening with me. This is what my model looked like when I put it in the game. This is what it looked like before the game. This is what it looked like in the game. Granted, they're not great, but how it translated over was so horrible that I'm so, that this should be censored. I had about two to three days left and I wanted to complete a game. So I completely pivoted away from what it was I was doing. And I said, what if I just take primitives and I make a simple ping pong type game, but I do it in 3D. There's a game called handball that's exactly like that. So what if I made a 3D handball game? This should be very simple to do. Um, once again, I did not plan well because I tried to do physics. I literally created an invisible paddle that would move and hit the ball and I figured that that would be the best way to handle this and um, I was dumb. <laughs> so for game two, it did not complete the criteria of being a completed game from start to finish as I did not develop any levels. 
and the second game that I was making for game two was not completed either, I would consider game two a failure. failure. My first game, I was not able to publish and my second game was a failure. So once again, I am like, I'm out of here. This is not for me. And this would be my takeaway at this point. You will learn very quickly if you like to do this or if you hate to do this or what part of it you like. Um, there's a YouTuber, he was making his game and he just decided, hey, I really like modeling way more than designing this game. And I want to do that. And that's what everybody should do. Uh, you should follow your passion that says, hey, I want to make games. But when you're making games, decide if making games is actually what you want to do. Maybe you just want to write the story. Be a writer now. Now you know. Um, and I learned during this process, as demotivated and frustrated as I was making this game, I genuinely like doing it. The handball game basically did not go well at all. Um, the original Break the Targets project did not go well at all. But I started to feel like I'm seeing how you put things together. People lose motivation on projects all the time. Usually in a week's time, the game starts to become a job anyway. Me doing it every week, a brand new project, helped me kind of avoid that. Because as I was getting disheartened and demotivated, I would also say, hey, t now it's time for the next project. And that would once again spark my creativity to start again. Hey, greatly appreciate you taking time out to watch this video. I did put a lot of effort into it. The entire video in terms of all six games is about an hour and a half. Please come back for part two, potentially part three, to see how I went from making games like the ones you've seen in this video to making games that I am much more proud of and that look like what you would expect from an indie developer or someone that is relatively competent. Appreciate you again. See you next time.